In this video, I'm going to be talking about Amazon FBA versus drop shipping. Uh, so when I talk about drop shipping, I'm talking about drop shipping in general online. Uh, so it's not just your Shopify store, that kind of thing, um, as opposed to Amazon FBA private label, which is um, a fantastic business model, I have to admit. Um, now, I've been a part of both, and um, I've, I've been, I, actually, I enjoyed both. Um, and they both had their challenges. There are a couple of main differences that I want to speak about, and um, it's probably only going to be a short video, but I just wanted to sort of highlight these uh, things that I found um, after having been a part of both of them. Um, so yeah, Brad Schrumpgel here from Dish the Grind. If this is your first time to the channel, please take a moment to subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you can get notified of other videos in the future. I'm going to be doing an e-commerce sort of segment over the next few weeks. And um, I thought I'd start with some of the most basic kind of pieces of e-commerce that I can think of anyway. Now, um, drop shipping for anybody that doesn't understand the process, uh, it's basically where somebody orders a product um, from your store, whether that is a physical store or it is a uh, online store, which is pretty much the way it goes these days. Um, and then instead of you having that item on in stock, you have a supplier who um, who the order goes to as soon as it's placed on your site. The order then ships from the distributor or the whole, or the, or the like the the wholesaler, the manufacturer. Then it goes from them straight to the customer and the uh, seller yourself. You never have to hold the item. This is an attractive business model because it means that you don't have to outlay a whole lot of cash to get started. Um, Whereas when it comes to Amazon FBA, you generally have to be ordering by a minimum quantity, whether that is 10 items, 100 items, 1,000 items. Um, you have to outlay that cash and you have to take a bit of the risk with that. Um, so I think that's why most people find the whole dropshipping model attractive and why people get sucked into um, pursuing a like a fulfilling career as a dropshipper is because it's so easy to sell that aspect of it is you can get started right now um, and you can put up a, a dropshipping store. You, you can you can start now and you can have it up by the next day kind of thing. Um, so that's like your basic kind of Shopify dropshipping model, um, which is great. Like Shopify is awesome. Because you can, like, like I said, you can have a, a, a storefront up really, really quickly, and a beautiful looking storefront, and you can um, populate it with products really quickly. The problem there, though, once you like, in order, once you populate it with products, the problem then becomes getting traffic to the store. So, it doesn't matter how good your store is, if nobody knows it's there, you're not going to sell anything. So that brings about a new kind of problem, which is generally getting traffic. Um, so where most people start to like. I've heard some people talking about the only way to do it is to get Instagram or Facebook ads. And I can tell you right now that if you're going to go down that path, you're going to fail really, really quickly because in order to get started on drop shipping, generally you want to be starting with a lower ticket item, um, which means that when you do that, drop shipping, you have very, very tight margins, which means that you don't have a lot of room. You, you basically, you're going to have no advertising budget. So unless you have a bit of working capital that you can put towards generating traffic so you can build yourself a little bit of a paid following, you're going to start a really, really surefire, quick way to failure because there is just not enough room. Or the other option is to be selling high ticket items so that you've got a bit more margin in there, but then it's really, then you, then you start facing the problem of buyer resistance. So, um, I'm, like I'll be talking about this in future as well because there is a way that you can do it, and you can do it because like if I if I talk about Amazon, you know Amazon. If I also talk about eBay, you also know eBay. Like these are two massive e-commerce giants. Amazon is huge, disgustingly huge, um, and like I I almost mean that like literally because I to be honest I don't really I don't like Je Jeff Bezos um, for a few for a few reasons. Um, and then at the same time too, like it's it, it's there. And if you want a piece of the e-commerce market, then you should get involved with it because e-commerce grew. It's a lot of people that have gone from traditional shopping styles to e uh, to online shopping. They've gone to Amazon. 
if he can do it and you can take a piece of that market, then you should, you should, you, you, you should go and do it. Um, so there's a couple of ways that we're going to be looking at like how you could drop ship without having to go to a Shopify and then try and build yourself a, a following through paid advertising. Or the other option is a much slower option, but a really good option is to be building a following uh, through social media. Um, that's a completely different ball game. I'm not going to go into that in this video. Um, we're just going to be talking about drop shipping versus FBA, Amazon FBA. Um, so th that's one of the main one of the main things when it comes to um, to drop shipping is traffic. It's just really really hard to get traffic. But in saying that though, it's once you once you do get it, then it's it's good. Like it's it, it could work really really well for you. Um, but you've probably seen these videos where people are tr like flashing Lamborghinis and all that kind of stuff and they're all sitting in front of um, you know the pool uh, at their mansion and that chances are those dudes don't even own those cars they don't own those houses they just rented it out or it's an Airbnb or something stupid like that so that they could go and film for the weekend and suck you into buying their course that's that's generally how those things work most of those Muppets don't make any actual money doing that there are a few people that do do it though and they do really really well out of it um, but I'll leave that up to you to try and figure out. You can do your own due diligence on those. Um, so then where I think that out of dropshipping and uh, fulfillment by Amazon, um, where, where FBA has the edge is that um, it costs a little bit more to get started with FBA, but because you're taking a lot more risk by outlaying some cash, is that you have a bit more skin in the game. And so it means, in general, you are going to be more motivated to make it work. So let's say, for example, uh, in a video that I did um, before, which I'll leave a link to in, in, in the description, I was looking at uh, rugby kicking tees. If you don't know what rugby is, go and look it up. Awesome sport. I love it. All blacks, all the way. Um, if you go and get a... Kicking tea, you might go and like. I think their their minimum order was two hundred and forty dollars, uh, two hundred and forty items, um, and the price per item was in a range from seventy two cents to two dollars per item. So, two hundred and forty items is going to be your minimum. They're going to be charging you two dollars per item. So you're looking at four hundred and eighty dollars USA upfront just for the items, and then you're going to be having to look at things like your freight. So, kicking teas probably only about you know so big. Made of rubber, really light, probably stack quite well. You wouldn't have to take up too much room. Um, I think you could, like, you know, for 240 items, like at $2 a piece, if anyone wants to buy rugby tees in the US, um, and you could be up and, up and selling. And 240 items is not a bad start, too. So relatively cheap. Um, should be relatively easy to market as well. So, um, yeah, so... Uh, buying them two dollars a piece they were selling uh really similar ones were selling on amazon for 13.99 so you know what's that two dollars 13 so you're looking at like a, a 12 dollar um profit margin there keeping in mind that you're going to have to be spending some of that on freight etc as well as other costs incurred by having Amazon ship and fulfill your orders and also deal with like any customer complaints and customer service, that kind of thing. People complain about the costs of selling on FBA as it being a real inconvenience. The thing about that is though, like if you were to, if you were to store these items, let's say, let's say you had 50 rugby kicking tees going out the door every day. Um, and you had to ship each one of those, chances are, if you get 50, you're not going to be selling them all, you're not going to be shipping them all at once because you might have 25 coming in the morning, 25 coming in the evening. So you want to be limiting the amount of times that you have to drive to the post office, individually packing all of these things, individually labeling, shipping, making sure they're all going to the right place, all of that kind of drama. Um, so we, like when you put it like that and you actually look at it, like even if you were to have an actual store where you had to deal with this kind of thing, it's it, that's another employee, and like the cost of another employee over the course of a year, you know, you're looking at thousands and thousands of dollars. So like, you have to weigh it up, and you have to see, in the grand scheme of things, it's 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 like it's a cheap, it's a relatively cheap cost of sales. So, um, 
for, for me personally, it's a no-brainer. Um, I, I have another business in the construction industry here, and I can tell you, like, my, my, my staff, they're not cheap, like, they are expensive, and then they complain, you know, they're whinging and all sorts of stuff, and I don't know why, I'm awesome, but you don't hear the, like, the, the, the people over there, that's, that's Amazon's problem, like, and, and Bezos, he can deal with that. So, by comparison, the, the fees, like what it costs to sell on Amazon, if you do it right, and it's, it's a drop in the bucket, like it's a drop in the ocean. Um, so yeah, something to think about. The other thing too is that I think it might take both drop, drop shipping, you can get started quicker, but it can take a really, really long time to sort of see yourself become, start to become profitable. Amazon FBA is a little bit more upfront, you know, costs, but I think you can start to see a return on investment sooner. And I think it's easier to scale and you have a little bit more of a control over your business. Um, now, where Amazon can become a bit of a problem is if you have a product that does really, really well, there is a chance that Amazon will recreate the same product and sell it that little bit better. So, something to keep in mind. Um, yeah, but that's like when it comes to drop shipping and Amazon FBA and the and like the difference between the two. And having experienced both of them firsthand, I would have to say that Amazon FBA is a better deal for the long term. Uh, that's not to say that you can't do both or that neither one will work. You just have to understand that both models, they're going to take a bit of work. They aren't just sit back and just click and get rich. There's, to my knowledge, there is nothing like that. But this is probably going to be one of the best and one of the easiest methods with which to achieve something that comes close to resembling that. Um, so in saying that too, I have a, uh, so everything that I've learned from both uh, dropshipping and Amazon FBA, um, I, I've like been part of courses and stuff, and uh, that's what got you know got me to go through the whole procedure. So I do know what it is that I'm talking about. Um, when it comes to Amazon FBA, I'm going to leave some descriptions, uh, some links in the descriptions below, and one of them is to a course called Amazing Selling Machine, which is a fantastic course. It is on the pricey side, but I think, in all honesty, if you really want to get started with a physical business, and it's got to be e-commerce that Amazon FBA, uh, Amazing Selling Machine, has got to be the way to go. So I'll leave the links in the description. There are a few options in there with which you might want to choose. If you decide, at the very least, check out the webinar. Fantastic webinar. And you can even get started just based on the information that they share with you then. Um, so yeah, Brad, ditch the grind. If you got some value out of this video, please give us a like. If you haven't subscribed, please do that, uh, do that too. Hit the notification bell, and you can stay in touch with all of the videos I'm going to be putting up, uh, up about the whole e-commerce model. So until next time, see ya.